Hi, this is Ed with that six plus 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 show. Uh, I'm here talking to Rob Kimpton, who has very recently won the World Championship qualifiers, earning him a golden ticket and I believe a paid trip to America for the World Championships in November. Is that correct, Rob? Yeah, yeah. I managed to uh, go pretty well at one of the Wine World events. So it's very, very exciting. exciting. Yeah. So a little bit of background here. I think it's fair to say, outside of my brother, which doesn't count because I've known him for 27 years, you are my oldest Warhammer friend um, who still plays, which um, we met at a tournament in 8th edition. Um, We ended up playing the same army at that tournament, actually. We were both playing Dark Angels, um, a brief dalliance away from the Drakari that you've typically played. Uh, We played a doubles event where we spent ages cracking out the most mathematically efficient army that we could it was it was just guns back in eighth edition was pure no terrain only kill uh we really probably should have won that event but we um made a fairly major tactical error in the fourth round uh but let's let's not go into that one too much (laughs) it's uh yeah so rob you are i would say absolutely a a faction specialist with drakari um you've been playing them as long as i know you you've been playing them almost exclusively at events apart from you know a couple of less important ones thrown as skulls uh what's your what's your history with warhammer and Drakari? yeah so was it 2018 i got back into the hobby after i think as a lot of people mm. have the same thing they they dabbled as when they were younger i've got the starter box back in third edition with Drakari and space marines um so that's where it all kind of started um those models and- hold up surprisingly well like they, oh. they're obviously dated, and if maybe it's just if you have that nostalgic, you know, feel for them, but they do. They're very, um, yeah, they 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 stand out anyway. I re- I remember them vividly. Yeah, the Ra- the Raiders and Ravages are great. I took one of the Ravages to an event only a couple of months ago. Mm. It's um yeah, they look, they still look great. Are they the but, same um, models? The uh, the original Ravages? No, no, no the okay. the Ravager is it's half metal. Mm. It's a horrible thing to build and to keep together. But uh, yeah, lots lots of memories. Um, so yeah, back back then, um, just played, just dabbled with friends, and then uh, in 2018, I moved to the UK. And when I was moving over, I figured that I had to pick up a hobby, moving to a new country, not knowing anyone, and it seemed like the perfect thing. I've always kind of kept my eye on Warhammer, but never really got back into it. And it seemed like a great chance just to start painting again. Really, so it was a good opportunity as well because obviously the prices in Australia are unbelievably high for for imported games. Oh, uh, just Warhammer in general, it's just crazy. <laughs> so yeah, if, was that if, too. You, if you think Warhammer's expensive here, then you know, go go overseas and uh, have a crack at it there. Yeah, they're moving what twenty minutes, half an hour away from Warhammer World. I mean. There's there's bonuses that way too, isn't there? It would be yeah, it'd be a waste not to. <laughs> really, you're just making the responsible decision by getting back. Yeah, into that's how I sell it to myself anyway. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So 2018, I picked it up, played for probably about a year, just casually down at the local games workshop, um, and then decided to try a tournament down at a Throne of Skulls at Warhammer World, and um, that's where I met you, Ed. It's was that your we first both, tournament? That was my first the, tournament yeah. ever. I had a horrible, horrible list. It was a Loyal 32 and Tactical yeah. Marines, basically, and a Leviathan yeah. Dreadnought. It oh, was yeah, horrible. It was, it, was, it was not good at all. Yeah. How, um, did, you, how did you do with that event? I, do you, do think I, got a th- I think I got a 3-2, and the yeah. only reason I got that was because there was that silly stratagem where you could hide your Maelstrom cards. Oh, yes! The Dark so, Angels one. Yeah, yeah so you, like, you could do that. And I half the time, I didn't know what my face-down cards were. I, I literally <laughs> didn't have a clue what was going on, but it seemed to work. Yeah, um, no, not to uh, you know. Of course, uh, I I came third at that event. Uh, I you? also went third too. I just did really well on the soft scores. For anyone who hasn't been thrown a skulls, great like entry ramp into competitive play because you get like half the points are for doing well in your games, and then half the points are for having a nicely painted army and just being friendly. So yeah. that was. Uh, <laughs> that was a good one. Yeah, that was the only reason I asked how you did, so I could yeah. slip that one. In. So just just slide that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it doesn't really compare to you winning a golden ticket, uh, but we'll <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll talk one. about soft scores soon. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> fantastic. Uh, 
yeah so so yeah that was my first event i pretty much got hooked after that and meeting you guys there's there a couple of you got into a little gaming group and we played pretty regularly every couple of weeks or so yeah absolutely um we set up a um tale of i think there were five of us initially or five or six four or five yeah yeah and tale of five gamers and um had a you know complete an army play some games um sort of jobby with some awards at the end which was a lot yeah. of fun and then and that's uh, why drukari started as well is it really yeah oh, that's where that's, oh, that's where they started fantastic i wanted I to go as far away from a gun line as possible was the selection so how are you feeling about drukari in 10th edition? yeah yeah slightly different now <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is a little bit different so um yeah. you've you've really played them through the the ups and downs um you were doing really well of them in eighth edition i i absolutely hated playing against them because they just had all the tricks it felt like they had the original mm. agents of vect where you could make someone's stratagems much less pleasant to use um and then coming into ninth edition obviously there was a run-up where they were incredibly strong uh, yeah. and you did you had a really a really strong showing with drakari uh, but unlike a lot of the drakari players you had quite a strong showing that didn't level off really yeah right. so Oops, sorry, mate. No, 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 I was going to say you go, you go. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I think I put that down to, like you said, it, it's it's the faction that I play. It's the only faction I really have a functionally um, own. I've about nine thousand points, I think now, so I can run most things. Um, but yeah, during the start of that broken book, I made a mental note to myself to not play Cult of Strife, not play um, Dark Techno racks mm. because i felt like i'd be using it as a crutch so i really made a idea of wanting to play what i wanted to and that was a real space raid take a little bit of everything get all the technical little pieces and just figure out the puzzles and everything doing little bits um so that's really where i wanted to play the game and i built a list and through all of ninth pretty much that was the base there was probably about i probably changed half the list and things came in and out but just playing the, core the same of the list, core. like the play style. Yeah. I, I think that's actually pretty much how you played the eighth edition list as well. Uh, maybe slightly cabal heavier and a few less witches, but it was. Yeah. Uh, that's what drew lot. me to the faction. Just little MSU units running around, doing just enough everywhere and absolutely murdering one part of the board. It was. It's, it's just how I like to play. Yeah. No, it's great to play against. As someone who does, who has played against uh, Rob's Dracari a lot of times, it's it's horrendous. I hate it. Yeah. Um, I usually get tabled by the end of it as well. So it's it's fun for everyone. And you, and you <laughs> always go right to the last second on the clock as oh. well. Well, not so much anymore. You have, uh, that's an unfair accusation to make now. It's pretty fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, in recent recent times, I don't think that's uh, as, as accurate. How uh, often but... at the end of an event do I tell you that I hate my army and I want to pick up knights? Well, <laughs> mostly you just look really tired um, but you know that's that's understandable because what what did happen in uh ninth edition we were on a team we were i can't remember exactly but i believe you me and jack were the highest rated team with only three players on it that means highest we had rated a, team with not enough friends we had nine scores and we couldn't get anyone to join to get the 10th score to give us an actual ranking against other teams um so you had to step away from the game a little bit um for for outside of game reasons yeah so i I had a little little baby little little baby boy so i stepped away i got a lot of painting done weirdly Mm. because the baby basically only slept on me so he's on a little sling while i was painting away so i got to keep up with the matter i got to watch a lot of bat reps and all that kind of stuff and keep up with the game so even though i wasn't playing i was still be able to i was still able to keep up with everything yeah, you did get um, a lot of painting done. A lot of it Eldar as well, which is funny, given that the uh, the run-up to 10th edition. And then I don't think yeah. I've seen you play Eldar at all. I've uh, played them half-painted in a local league, and that is it. Yeah, I think yeah. I've played about 10 games with them. Yeah, You have all the fun stuff, though, so you it wouldn't. it's not like playing against um, the uh, the double Wraith Knight army or anything like that. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I'm just waiting all... for more Aspect Warriors. It's yeah. a painting project. That's all it yeah. is. They do look good. Uh, you should check out his Instagram at in the the description box below sorry chris you're gonna have to put that down there uh, <laughs> lovely uh, perfect so obviously the army's changed quite a bit how are you feeling about it in 10th edition obviously it's significantly different to how it has been previously it's massively different it's 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 uh taking a complete twist so what i was running in ninth edition my effective output was three dark lances in the shooting phase that was it. it. Was all combat apart from that, and then now Codex or oh, Index Darklands has landed. Uh, 
And I have in my last list I've run, I had literally no combat. I had an Archon who never wanted to get into combat. That was it. So it's a big change. It's it's still fast, still mobile, still dominates a part of the board. And can still you can still build lists to throw out MSU little units everywhere, but it's very much shooting. It's just pick pick a target, absolutely nuke it. Hope you get through in Vuns, basically. That's that's the list now. Yeah, it's um yeah it's an, it's a huge adjustment, but I'm I'm starting to get to the point where I'm enjoying the list. That's good. Because I know when we were talking previously, uh, it wasn't because it's so different to what you have been playing. It wasn't really what you were looking for in a Drakari list. Yeah, um, games will end sooner because you are only playing two of the turns instead of three of them. So that's uh, <laughs> that's that it. does help, I guess. There's the <laughs> there's the benefit, and the psychic phase has gone away as well, which you didn't have to worry about. It just makes your Never opponent's turns go that. faster. Yeah, that's so I, I you know it's all upsides here. Uh, <laughs> perfect. So obviously you did very well. Uh, and by very well, I mean you won the uh, the championship qualifiers that happened uh, just a couple of weeks ago now. Um, do you want to give us a, a quick overview of your list before we go into the games? Yeah, so by saying one, I won on soft scores. It was a there was two tickets at this event. Um, there was one um one for winning the event, which Hellstorm Mikey won. He he was the only player to go six and oh. Um and the other one took into account soft scores. So like you said, you get points for winning games. You get points for having favorite uh, opponent votes and favorite army votes. Um, so that's where it all came came through. Of, of course, um, yeah. when I say win, uh, not at all biased because you are on my team. Uh, <laughs> but re- this is really the true winner of the event. And I'm sure Mikey would um, would agree with me. Uh, and if not, Mikey, I'd love to debate you on that. He's getting plenty of stick already, I know. <laughs> Warhammer World events, it's, it's where the real real games are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so my list I will quickly give you a rundown let's go my phone because I will miss things um, so it has an Archon um, with the Art of Pain um, basically he sits in the back corner does nothing in the entire game except vex something and get, generate some pain tokens um, and hope you don't have indirect or exactly where you indirect. want That's your, all uh, he does. your leader to be yeah it's, yeah it's very on flavor for the faction isn't it he just sends everyone forward to die horribly and do things for him to be fair, when you put it like that, it, it kind of is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's fluffy. It's a fluffy choice. <laughs> um, then there's three units of Kepalites, um, two little squads of Rax just for trading, uh, three Raiders and two Venoms. Uh, the Venoms are used to split up the Kepalite squads, so I can those two of those um, Kepalite squads can turn into two five-man squads. So effectively, I get one squad for trading and one squad with good guns. Um, two Kronos for just being tanky and generating pain tokens. Two squads of mandrakes to just score points because they just they're just a great harassment and point scoring unit. Um, three ravagers because they're just amazing. Just nine dark lances for under three hundred points on a T nine chassis is is great with deep strike. Um, a squad of reavers. This was one of the late picks into the list. Um, they're just fast. They're OC six. They can deny primary and just they they can just score points as well. Um, and then three squads of Scourge. So two two of those squads had Dark Lancers. One of them had Haywire, which is a bit of the weird choice. It uh, kind of started off as model restrictions, but after some game testing, they actually are great because they reliably get damage through, whereas four Dark Lance shots just, it's so swingy. Mm. You need to just pip off a few few wounds. They, they do pull their weight. They... Um... Is it one shot each on those high wire guns, or is it deep? No, it's two two shots. Two shots, excellent. Yeah, so two shots each, hitting on fours, uh, but pain tokens obviously get your re rolls. Yeah, and then anti vehicle four devil wounds, at strength three minus one. So Solid. you, yeah, it, it on average it does nine mortal wounds to a vehicle. So it's really yeah. good in the knights matchup and and anything. That's it's a it's heavy. a good anti matter pick because a lot of the top armies at the moment are using. Mm. Um, and you know, th- four dark lances wouldn't have killed any more GSE models. So, yeah. if anything, and, it's a little bit better there. And as I'm finding out, is that they're actually decent at horde clearing as well because you roll a couple of sixes and suddenly it's six mortals. Sure, sure. Yeah. That's something I hadn't considered there. I do like yeah. the look of uh, Haywire. Um, I was looking at some um, Harlequin bikes with, uh, and then mm. I was like, well, I just run more bright lances because they're so cheap. <laughs> but, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, but the thought um, was there. Yeah, the the only downside of it is twenty four inch range. So you have to be very careful with Overwatch. 
Mm, so yeah, so they are a little bit bait unit as well. Okay, always yeah. last minute to move. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I do like having something in, in reserve. Um, a, a, a good thing that you can do is make your opponent very aware that you have something in reserve uh, and then just not bring them in when they fail to overwatch all of the Pretty other much. stuff that moves up. Uh, yep. I've been, I've been, eh, it's not caught out because you kind of have to respect it, but I've had people pull that on me and go, yep, yeah, no, nope, fair play. I don't get yep. to overwatch you this turn. It is what it is. I've just given you bad options. There you go. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is how you have to, uh, you know, because all the options are bad for you if you're moving into Overwatch range, so you've got yeah. to make the best of it. Lovely stuff. So, uh, give us a quick run through on the games then. Okay. Uh, let me just quickly bring up Word document, because I would not remember otherwise. Uh, so it was a six-round event. Uh, nope. Sorry. Six-round event. Um, first round, I pair... So, there's two guys at Warhammer World that I play every time I go there. A guy called Mark and a guy called Stu. And uh, I rocked up. You know, you go into Warhammer World, you have breakfast at Bugman's. It's kind of a bit of a tradition. Walked in, looked at them both and went, we're going to be playing this weekend. It's going to be game five, which is usually what it is. Um, pairings pop up. I pulled Mark. Um, Mark is one of these guys who are always hunting the top, top tables. Great guy. Always a super tight game. There's always only a couple of points in it. Um, he was running his custodes. Mm. Um, and I knew this was going to be a super hard game because he's a great player in custodes. Drukari either just murder them or yep. do nothing. There's there's no middle ground. It's it really is a game of four ups, isn't it? Into this. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. So we played Purge the Foe, already a great start against custodes with Drukari. Um. And Chilling Rain and Crystal of Battle, so the short diagonal one. So at a bit of distance. Um, and didn't want to give up kills and wanted to kind of deny primary into custodes. Not the best thing, but um, but yeah, we played through. Um, I went, don't remember if I went first or second. Um, I put a couple of Ravagers, some Scourge, and a Raid with Cabalites in reserve, which is kind of a theme throughout all these games. It kind of seems a sweet point for me to not get stuck in my deployment zone um, and to be able to put pressure on when I need to. Um, so the game, effectively, we were both very cagey coming to the middle because we knew what would happen. So we both pushed out as far as as far as we could into the middle. I think Mark put uh, some scoring units just off the objectives in the corners, and he pushed into the middle with a big brick. Okay. Um, with I think it was the Trajan or the Shield Captain, one of the two. I think it was the Shield Captain. He's get the free strap. Um, and sat just behind some ruins, so I can only get a couple of pot shots off. Uh, we played a little bit of a trading game and I think it was end of turn two or start of turn three. Mm. We were just we were just talking the game through as we play. Um, and we, he was saying, what do I need to do? And we both looked at the game. We both came up with the thing like, you need to push now or you're going to lose. Um, so it was really nice just talking throughout. We know exactly what each other are playing, really nice games. Yeah. Um, so we came out and I picked up just about his entire guard brick in the middle. Um, in a turn of shooting, um, and I managed. To, yeah, it's um, it's twenty three dark lances in my list. So if you're not making those four ups, it it, it happens. It, it it can fall apart pretty quickly. Yep. Um, and then just set up some roadblocks with racks, just holding hands in front of a um blade champion unit, just stop just blocking out areas of the board, um, stop them getting counter charges off. Um, so it was backwards and forwards, super tight. Um, and it ended. 82 to 87. Okay. The thing that won him his, the game was he had two sisters squads left that I just couldn't pick up and they scored huge amounts of points in the last two turns. So super fun game. Got the first loss. Set myself up to submarine for the rest of the tournament. As you should do it. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that, that was a game that I was expecting to get and get it later on in the, in the mm. tournament. So it was a good fun way to start the game. Uh, start the tournament. Uh, next up, I played a guy against... A guy called Paul, and he had Chaos Space Marines. Uh, he had um, possessed uh, some cultists, four squads of noise marines, Lucius, a couple of squads of Havocs, um, two squads of a Blitz, some possessed, some demonettes, seekers, and the uh, Chalesk, is it? The demon I'm not gonna try with and the pronounce... little demon on top? Yeah, yeah, the double whammy. I'm not going to try and pronounce it, but 
Yeah, that's I, I tried. We'll see. Yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure. you did better than I would have done. <laughs> um, cool. So this game, um, it was long diagonal. Um, so search and destroy and taking hold. So straight up mission. Mm. Um, I went uh, first, which I was very happy about. The way I deployed, I wanted to make sure that I didn't get my whole army tagged by his seekers. Um, so it meant that I could start coming out, pick up the seekers and just start controlling primary. Um, Paul was very unlucky in this in his first turn. I mm. threw some racks into the middle just to force him to bring something out. And uh, he came in with his possessed and wanted to just get a couple in just to pick them up. And he rolled a 12 on his charge, which meant the entire unit was just sitting in the open. Ooh. Um, so yeah, next turn I picked up his big possessed bomb. Uh, I think there was a character in there with it. Um, his seekers and a couple of noise marine squads. And it was just uh, just holding holding my ground at that point. Um, clean up from there. Clean up from there. Uh, and that was a 85-65 win to me. He did well to get that many points if you managed to uh, clear out his possessed that early. Yeah, he pushed one side and uh, it turns out a blitz pulled a lot of firepower out as well. <laughs> yes. pop a lot of boats. So yeah. when they came in, um, it was the first time we ever played against them. So How they can do running? work. Uh, two by two. Two by two. Yeah. yeah, yeah so there's one of them doing the full re-rolls. I think he split fire with them and picked up two bolts boats with just that one unit i was like oh okay <laughs> <laughs> it's a good start isn't it oh yeah. oh no that's, that's what like, they do great yeah. people have been talking <laughs> about these things they can't be that oh god <laughs> oh god what's happening i thought i had this um cool yes yeah, so that was a great great game um next game i played uh thomas your friend sharky uh yes i do see yeah. him um at those uh games workshop events i haven't played him one, one yet but I think you played him yet. That was the first time I've played him. I've seen him at events the whole I time. I, no, I've talked to him a lot. I don't think I've actually yeah. uh, ever ever played him. It'll happen eventually, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, that was a really lovely game. Um, so, his list, he was running a, um Ironhands list. Mm. Uh, it was a little bit different. So, he had Iron Father Ferris, mm -hmm. three Tech Marines, okay. um, two Intercessor Squads, an Illuminate Squad, two Lancers, a Repulsor, Mm. Uh, executioner, mm. um, hail strike and hammer strike speeders, three th thunder fire cannons, mm -hmm. and a vindicator and an extraction squad. Interesting. I I have done some list, list building with him, not like super in depth, but just sort of like talked about stuff that you know maybe he wants to put in his list. And he yeah. he very much makes his own list as opposed to going. This is what you'll see meta wise. So you'll see a weird thing across the table from you. Go, huh. This is going to work, and I don't know how it's going to work. Yeah, which it's is one terrifying. of those guys that you can just never underestimate. Like you go, yeah. it's a bit of a weird list, but he he knows what he's doing with it, and he's very mm -hmm. practiced. Yeah, because like you'll you'll get to the day two, and you're like, oh, there he is up at the top of the tables. Yeah. Um. So it's not like he's bringing a bad list and it's not working. You're just like, I don't understand why it works. Yeah, it's working for some reason. Yeah, he knows something. Yeah. Um. So this one uh, was vital ground, chilling rain, and crucible of battle. Um, all these event, all these were on the new GW layouts as well. So day mm. one had one layout, day two had the other. The GW layouts are, are really good. I really like them. Um, there's obviously obviously Unless issues with you're towering against knights. Yes. Yeah. yeah. There's there's huge issues with towering, but outside of that, it's actually a really interactive and and um, there's a lot of tactical play in them. I really enjoy the maps outside of towering. Um, yeah. They're a lot of fun to play on. You've got to like think about your angles. Which is important in quite a shooting heavy game. It's uh yeah, yeah. no, I agree, they're good. Um, cool. So I didn't write down what I oh, I went first. Um I deployed, deployed very defensively, uh, because he had a lot of guns. Mm. Um I put the same amount in deep strike again. Um and put some mandrakes out in the middle where they couldn't get touched to deal him to either come out to deal with them turn two or get some cheeky charges and then be exposed himself. Um, so I push forward um, a little bit, very, very uh, cautiously, um, use my Scourge and Venoms. So Scourge can fire and fade. They can mm -hmm. hop out, take some shots, and then hide, hide back in cover. Um, and the Venoms, the guys inside, can hop out, shoot, and hop back into the fight phase. So there's a lot of Great. like... Yeah, you can just pop out, shoot 10, 10 or dark lances without any any risk, really, and just start picking things off before your whole main army comes in. 
Um, so got a couple of damage. Um, his Thunderfire cannons went off and killed the Archon's Cabalites. I attached him to some Cabalites this, this game, just in case I went second. Um, and I think he shot two or three into the Cabalites and killed five mm. Cabalites. I got yeah. very lucky. Um, I think I let him faster than as well. So there were negatives to hit and I think they had a three-up armor save as well. Um, so, Are you trying to tell me that they had cover? In tenth edition, some of your models had cover. I yeah. don't believe it. And they didn't. The things firing didn't ignore cover, which was the surprising thing. That, I guess that is the surprising <laughs> thing. Yes. Um, yeah, and then we effectively traded a whole heap. The Haywire Scourge went absolutely nuts in this. I think they picked up the Vindica- uh the Vindicator, the um, Demolisher Cannon Tank. Yeah, yeah. They they, they popped out. You own and... one. I'm pretty sure. No, I don't have one. Of okay, them. no, I'd take it back. Yeah, I raided them back in eighth. Mm. I was very close to raiding them. Um, they popped out and just did not twelve mortal wounds to one, um, and then popped back in. Um, that is that is backbreaking. Yeah, it's he's like cool. There's there's this much OC in the middle. I went cool. There isn't any more, and I'm gonna fire and fade. <laughs> I'm gonna fire and fade five cabalites into the middle and take it off here. Yeah, there's five cabalites standing there looking at Iron Father Ferris and like two massive tanks. <laughs> Please don't. Um, so yeah, that that was very just a backwards and forwards. It was a super super tight game. Um, the game finished seventy three to sixty six, and mm. what it came down to was could a Cabalite squad in a raider pick up four extraction squad members, and they they just could. But yeah, it was it was that tight. If they didn't do that, I would have lost. Yeah. Um, so that was a great game. That's first day. So I finished okay. first day on two one. Perfect. How were how you feeling uh, at the end of day one? Um, I was feeling all right. I was just um, happy with how the list was performing. All the games were super close, which is kind of what I enjoy in a list. Mm. Um, I don't like this alpha strike or or just complete table lead. I, I like to play the the KG trading game. So yeah. it was it was good. I had no expectations for the weekend either. I I went there expecting to hit knights and Eldari probably for half of the games. Yeah, and so, then round it out with a GSC game at the end and go home then, really yeah. sad. Yeah. yeah, so spoilers, I avoided all of them. Um, <laughs> that does make a difference, doesn't it? Yeah. Lovely stuff. Um, well, before we go into day two, we are going to take a quick break and we'll be back with you. If you like the content we create and you'd like to support us, you can do so as easily as subscribing to the video, giving it a thumbs up. Uh, watching another video is fantastic because it gives us more minutes viewed, makes YouTube more likely to recommend us to another person. Um, sharing the video with your friends, all of these are great. If you'd like to support us financially, however, we do have a new Patreon. Um, the link will be in description. You can support us on any of the five tiers. The first three tiers are mostly content driven. The first one being behind the scenes content access, um, all the way up through Lieutenant and Captain, where you can see, for example, our weekly hobby streams and forecast streams, um, 10% off some of the events that will be run, the slam events, and 10 dice and measures as a physical reward after six month subscription. Or if you're looking to up your game and you'd like to access the mentoring side of the program, you can look at the chapter master or Primark, where you'd be looking at a monthly progress call or multiple coaching calls um, with more physical rewards there on the Primark tier, including a portrait made by Scrivo. All right. So how did your day two go? How did you start off? Uh, so day two, um, walked up to the table, um, a guy called Andrew was there. Um, he had a, uh, Space Marine army. Uh, so there were Raven, Raven Guard. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, sorry, a... that's, that's a ninth edition thing. Uh, we call them Gladius Task Force now. A Gladius Task Force. Uh, I don't know. They, they, he had, had a chapter master in there. Um, Fair so... Yeah, Andrew I had a chat with him free game. He um, seemed a little bit frazzled. It was his first tournament. He told me, mm-hmm. um, so we just talked talked it through. Got the game going. Um, lovely guy. I had horrible cards for the first two turns. I scored one card in the first two turns. Um, so I kind of went into this. Went. This is going to be fine. One of those cards in the first turn were no prisoners and overwhelming force in my first two, and he threw a squad of scouts onto one of the objectives. I completely forgot they had two wounds. Oh, no. So I threw out, uh, I think I had a raider going into them. Well, I thought I did. I also forgot that they have lone operative. 
Uh, <laughs> yep. Yep. Um, so I ended up having a Venom, Cabalites. Oh no, I just had Cabalites and Rax trying to kill them. So <laughs> um, yeah, completely with that. Ended up charging them with everything and wrapping them and hoping for the best. Um, so it was a very nervous start um, mm. to that game. Um, I was I was behind on points for the first three turns. Um, and after that, I managed to clear that side over the next two turns and just got a, got the ability to pivot around and just keep throwing cheap chaffy units onto objectives to deny primary. Um, and then the cards started to pick up. So that was super tight. We ran, I think, I think we ran a little bit over actually. Um, they're, they're quite chilled at Warhammer World when it comes to time, especially for the first round because it just cuts into your lunchtime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we got that, we got that game done. I think we talked at the last turn, but it was kind of clear what was happening. Um, that ended out a 71 to a 53. Um, and then after that game, went, went and actually had, had lunch with, um, with Andrew. And we talked Warhammer, talked about things he wanted to improve on, talked about list design, wanted to get some more events. And it was just, it was just really lovely, really. Um, it's one of the best things about going to events and kind of especially the Warhammer World ones, you, you end up talking to more random people than you do, it seems. Mm. Um, the, the atmosphere there is just great. It is, and especially because there's the restaurant right next door to the gaming hall. Yeah. It's very easy to be like, oh, do you want to just go, you know, sit down and get some food, have a chat? It's... Yeah, I think I had a beer with almost every opponent afterwards, after each game. So, yeah, it's, it's really good. The beer there is great, too, in Bugman's. Um, cool. Um, next game was against Jack and his Chaos Space Marines. This was probably one of the spicier lists that I played against... Um, so the mission was take and hold, hidden supplies, and search and destroy. He had a baton, um, a master of possessions who went with a big blob of possessed, um, cultists just for backfield, some legionnaires who went with a, a baton just to give him some extra wounds and give him full rerolls, which was quite funny. I didn't realize that happened. Yep. Uh, <laughs> three forge fiends, a squad of four blitz, um, two little squads of, of possessed, and a changeling. Um, so this game, I put almost a thousand points in deep strike, okay. um, because I couldn't quite get angles and I wanted to get the first volley of fire off the, against those forge fiends, basically. Um, cause if they got into my army, they were, they were going to pick it up. Mm. Um, so who went first? Um, I went first. So I came out into the middle staying was it 24 inches away or 25 inches away from all those possessed with their advance and charge yep um so came out into the middle as far as i can popped out the scourge and the and the venoms took some pot shots i think i took i think i took half the wounds off one of the forge fiends mm -hmm. um just with some duck, lucky dark lance shots um and then just set up for the for the next turn he started to come out, sent some little uh, little possessed squads to the corners and sent the big one to the middle for a, for a turn two press, basically. Um, next turn, I brought everything down on uh, on one flank, basically, and tried to kill his forge fiends. I killed one and got the other one down to six wounds. Nice. Um, I also killed most of the possessed blob, though, as well. That um, is the big thing because the uh, the yeah. forge fiends will consistently tick through the game, but if the possessed yeah. are gone, he loses a lot of board control. My idea was try and stop him from tagging as much as possible. Just kill kill, kill the board control, and yeah. the other stuff is is secondary. Um, and again, set up racks, holding hands, keeping keeping charges out of out of my lines, uh, just getting those screens up. Um, and that that's, I think that's what really won me this game. I had. Um, some racks spaced out as efficiently as possible, cutting off almost a quarter of the board from a squad of possessed, and it just kept my, all my boats safe from being tagged. Um, so yeah, it went backwards and forwards. Um, I think the funniest thing in this game is turn turn four. He had a forge fiend as the only thing holding his back objective, mm. and I brought some haywire scourge in just within twenty four. Yep. Of of it. And he he overwatched you to for him to pick them up, he has to overcharge. Um so he did his dark packs, he did his overcharge, um and he blew himself up. So yeah. it was still that coming. He was, he was damned if he did, damned if he didn't. It yeah. was hilarious. He said it was gonna happen at the start of the game, it happened. 
Um, and then next turn, my Mandrax were quite happy with that because they just dropped onto a home objective and scored a absolute huge... No, they, they scored a couple of points, but it drew um, a bat and backwards. So it took these... I think that was all he had left on the board at the end of the game. Um, yeah, it was good fun game. Swingy, it could have gone either way. I had a very lucky turn where I picked up all four of Blitz, mm-hmm. um, which was huge. They, were, they would have pinned down another side um, if I didn't do that. Yeah, they are absolutely brutal how are you feeling about them across the two games Did they do as much in this game as they did in the first one um they did the same amount i think um mm. first game i could i picked up one squad after they shot but i vectored their reroll strat right once once they lose that they're not scary well they they're not as scary sure sure uh, but this game i vectored the nurgle strat um, because to, cause it's all, all the all the Forge fans were Nurgle, I'm like, well, if I don't do that, I'm never going to be able to shoot them. Yeah, for context, for anyone who doesn't know what the Nurgle strat is, you uh, basically make a unit unshootable outside of 12 inches, which is yeah. very difficult to respond to for a gunline army. When you're shooting at 36 inch range, yeah. Yeah, you deep strike yeah. in 24 <laughs> inches away going, please let me shoot you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was a, a fun game. There's a bit of luck. It was backwards and forwards. Um, I feel like I controlled the game fairly well. Um, just with my move blocks. Um, and that was 90 to 69, but probably one of the closest games of the of the event, um, as opposed to the, I think probably the first game was, but this was a very close second. Mm. One of those um, games where it's very close for the first three turns and then the last couple of turns, whoever's won that swing just picks yeah, up there's the Yeah, that swing. One, one of us were going to be picking up half their army. It just happened to be that I got the shots through. Yeah. So yeah, very tense, very fun. Uh, and then last up, I played a gentleman named Anthony. Um, he was running um, Imperial Fists. Mm-hmm. So he had the, I'm going to butcher this, Darnath Lysander, the, the we'll chapter master. Lysander, uh, Lysander? I, think, I, I think that's correct anyway. Yeah. Um, so he was in there. There was a librarian, um, eliminators, three gladiator lancers, gladiator <laughs> reaper, uh, two squads of interceptors with the bolters, mm-hmm. um, a little inferno squad, um, an infiltrator squad, a repulsor, storm speeder, and five terminators. So it was very, very armor heavy. Um, a lot of guns. A lot of guns, very armor heavy. He started this army 16 days before the tournament, and now one of the best looking armies at the event. I don't nice. know how he did it. Um, if they're yellow. It was an airbrush. That's the uh, yeah. That's the only answer. Airbrush and weathering. That's that's the way to do yellow. You've seen you've seen my guard. I have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So he had a lot on the board. Um, I put again almost thousand points into reserve. Um, just the board setup was I wasn't going to get angles. Um, he started everything on the board, which from the get go I was like excellent. It's going to take him three turns to get out of his deployment zone. Um. It turns out it's a lot quicker when you have devastated doctrine, which I, which, uh, which I wasn't thinking about in deployment. Um, so uh, this game, we he brought ev- pretty much everything in except the inceptors. Um, I threw racks and my chaff stuff into the middle, um, just to deny points. Um, next, uh, he brought his flame unit into the middle objective. This is kind of where I think there was a big swing in the game. Mm. Um, so in my turn two, when they were there, I had a unit of Mandrakes just hiding off and I just walked them onto the objective and he overwatched. And I went, excellent, perfect. Now the rest of my army can function for the rest yep. of the game. That so huge. that was that that was the only overwatch he did the entire game. Right. Um, so it meant my Scourge could actually function and not just be absolutely slaughtered I was wondering... every time I moved when you said that he had five flamers, because there's such a good like anti-meta pick at the moment, because there's a lot of T3 stuff running around with not incredible armor. Yeah, um, he, but yeah. he had the librarian attached to him for the four of him van as well, so they weren't right. trivial to okay. shift. So... It was a full brick of ten, was it? No, it was just five. It was oh, just a little okay. harassment unit in the repulsor, just to step sure. out and just cause midfield problems, uh, which it kind of did. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, from that point, it was I dropped... I think it was turn two or three, I dropped everything again on one flank um, to try and pick up a couple of tanks. I think I picked up two tanks and a speeder um, and just some intercessors. Mm. Um, the intercessors or the marines of some type. Sure. Um, and it was just a trading game again. Um, 
Uh, we both lost a lot. I lost, I think, three or four boats in the response turn. Mm. Um, and it was just backwards and forwards of just picking things up. Um, those those repulses are tough. They yes. do not go down easily. Yep. Um, he was pop, he was popping smoke and he was armor contempting fairly regularly around the place with cover. It, they just don't go. I put most of an Eldar army into one uh, at the 10th edition uh, event I went to six weeks ago, wherever it was. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you get that sinking feeling when you've shot half your army into it and you've done nothing. You're like, Mistakes oh. were made. I should have ignored it. <laughs> but now I've now I've only got things that can shoot that, so I've really got to double down. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, that was backwards and forwards again, super close. The game ended up at 77-65. Um, I went second, so I knew I could play a little bit cagey and know that I could get a big scoring turn at the end. Um, and that was that. So, um, end of the day, five. Uh, end of the weekend, it was a 5-1 with six very close, very fun games. Fantastic, yeah. Really, really solid result for one of the armies that's not one of the top meta armies. Uh, obviously, as you said, you didn't hit the uh, the Eldar and Knights, but you, know, you can only beat what's put in front of you. And yeah. um, no one here can say that you you wouldn't have beat all the Eldar and Knights players, uh, and if they do, I'll fight them. Uh, <laughs> so how did you um, how did you feel about about the list coming out of it? What was sort of the the best performers for you? Um, probably the best performers, the most surprised was the Haywire Scourge, mm. because they were a last minute addition. Um, they took the place of a Solitaire and Rax. Oh no, a Death Jester and Rax. The same points as that. And when I was list building, I went, I, I don't need lone operative. If I'm in the middle, I'm within 12. Sure. So I just don't need lone operative. Um, and again, going back to Knights, I knew that if I didn't have Haywire, I wouldn't be able to pick up Knights. Mm. It takes my entire army to pick up a, a Crusader chassis Knight, mathematically. So Wow. Yeah. So yeah. having those mortal wounds is a, a yeah, big Just swing push it over the top. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I was I was super happy. the The bikes were great. They just they just denied Prime with their OC six and just set up move blocks and just were and they scored a lot of points because a sixteen inch move with fire and fade with assault weapons means they can just get onto any part of the board and do actions. Yep. And again, if they want to stop that, they have to Overwatch there, which means my kill stuff stays alive. Makes sense. Um, were there any heatlands? Oh yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, the heat, the heat uh, lance as well. Yeah, uh, there, were there any units that you thought sort of underperformed that you maybe be looking to cut before you go in November? Um, I don't know. It, it it's it's a weird time, isn't it? Just before a data mm. slate, and we know that so much is going to change. Well, we don't know, but we we we're all hopeful that there's going to be a massive shake up with the Eldar meta. Yeah. Um. So. I'm just sitting sitting on it at the moment. I, I don't think anything underperformed. Um, everything did its job. Some of the jobs, like Rax and the Five Man Cavalites, were just to go forward and die horribly and give people bad decisions, and that's what they did. And Rax soak up way more firepower than you think they should. Always they, they, do. It's, yeah, yeah, they're incredibly frustrating to play against. And, yeah. and uh, then if you do get it, I get a pain token. So yeah. everybody's a winner. Mandrakes as well. Obviously, they can go back into reserve just on the data sheet, I believe. Yeah, so you can do it every turn, including turn one if you go second. Worth highlighting because I think everyone who watches this video won't have played against uh, Drakari. So, yeah, it's such a fantastic toolbox unit. Um, always incredibly frustrating. Do you, were you running two squads of them? Yeah, I think two. I, I ran two squads because I wanted, if I played into something that could drop into my lines turn one, like a drop pod or something, sure. I wanted one unit that could screen, one unit that could play the, the secondary game. So Makes I think sense. two is a sweet spot. I think every Drakari army should have two squads of Mandrakes. Yeah, no, I, I can't disagree. They're an incredible toolbox unit. They're not quite yeah. as good as Warp Spiders, but they fill a similar sort of niche in terms of uh, yeah. doing the And they're only 70 points, so... Good, cheap Eldar shenanigans. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, anything that you took away from the, the event there that you want to wrap up on? Um, I think I've probably said it a couple of times, but the Warhammer World events, they've, they've always had a bit of a stigma of being not the best events terrain-wise. Mm -hmm. Um, and like rules wise as well, weirdly being a Warhammer event. Um, but it was absolutely sensational. Every table was exactly the same. They were all had uh, the perspex spaces with the full, um, US open GW terrain layout. 
Um, there was judges walking around in bright yellow t-shirts you could call over. I think there was one guy on the rules team. There was an app developer. There was a couple of other very um, knowledgeable people there. Um, and I, I, the the rules writer, I actually had a game against him at my last event. So I saw him, got changed. like, yeah, I'm on the rules team. So he was asking for feedback, which is amazing. Mm -hmm. It just shows how engaged they are with wanting to make the game better, I think. Um, so yeah, I think that was kind of the big takeaway is the improvement that they've gone through um, at, at that event. And it, yeah, it's so I think it's going to be great for it, the more competitive players or or, for, or people just going to their first event. Fantastic, yeah, because they the Throne of Skulls events that we went to were really good for it's like a an on ramp. Uh, it's good to hear that they're offering a better competitive experience at the top end as well. Yeah, nice to see. Lovely stuff. Well, thank you so much for your time. You're a busy man, and uh, thank you for giving us the rundown on how Drakari won an event, did the best. <laughs> fight me mikey uh lovely stuff well thank you very much and we will see 